gotten totally wind blown out there as walking across over here, so my hair is a little on the crazy side. <laughs> we have had some crazy, almost fall-like weather the last couple of days. It seems like uh, definitely spring is upon us with the rains and the clouds and everything. There was a storm that came in from, I guess, the northwest, and it has blown down here and has given us some fun wind and rain. I'll take it. We have um, plants and trees being planted right now. So over the, um, the weekend, we had uh, a friend of ours that we know that owns a big tractor. He came over, um, him and another guy that they both bring two tractors at a time. They came over and they dug these big holes so we can get the trees in the ground. So that's always fun. All right, let me get us live here make sure all is good and that we're up and moving because that's no bueno if it's not yep we are up and rolling and it looks like everything is going good we are not frozen at the m present moment now that being said we could be doing some freezing up depending on how this weather goes um it is a pretty chilly day today i think um, what did it say? It is 59 degrees. So huge jump from just a couple days ago when it was like almost 90 degrees. It was like 87, I think. Peggy, I know I talked to you that day. I think it was a Friday or Saturday. And it was 87 degrees. And then the following day, boom, we were down like to 60s. It was crazy. It was being very, very bipolar, I guess you would say. But yeah, it is, I love it when it's like this. I could do a little less with the wind, but you know what? If it cools us off, I'll take it. It was Friday, okay, good. So it looks like Peggy has joined us. I know I came in a minute or two early, so um, I will give everybody a little bit of time. Um, we are um, getting ready to have our retirement happen for our upcoming um what is it for our mini catalog and our big yearly camp catalog so both of those the sale starts um what is it i think it is uh, april 9th is when it starts i believe i have the brochure in front of me but then it doesn't have a date on it so I am highly recommending everybody go over to my blog, stampinthepinkbarn.com. You just received your catalog. Oh, you lucky girl. I have not gotten mine yet. Um, so yeah, um, you will want to definitely print that catalog off. If you scroll down through a couple of the posts, you're going to say where, see where it says last chance. Um, and you'll see a big 60% off graphic on there. Click on that, either the heading or it'll say read more. If you click on either one of those two places, it'll take you actually into the blog post where you will read down just a little bit and then you'll see in blue, you'll have two big bold lettered, um, it says download PDF and you will see one will be for the January, April mini catalog and the other one will be for the yearly annual catalog that is retiring. We have both catalogs retiring. <clears throat> so that being said, the excellent egg, which I'm going to be using today is actually going to be retiring. I highly recommend this set. If you like to make Easter cards, this is a fantastic set for many years to come. Once I get you guys flipped around and I start going through the set with you, you'll see why. Um, it's just got some really cool dyes with it as well. So yeah, super fun. Just to let you guys know, um, again, that sale does not start until April 9th. So is it April 9th? Uh, I better open up my computer and tell you guys for sure because for some reason in my head, I'm thinking a different date. So let me look here. Um, so I can make sure I tell you guys the right information and not misinform anybody. So, um, yes, it does start April 9th is when that sale starts. So 
That's what I'm trying to let everybody know is you need to download those PDFs, get those in your hands, get your list started. I will let you know that those items are only as supplies last. So normally the first things that we see go out of stock are the in colors for the previous like year. So if you see the 2022, 2024 in colors, which is Parakeet Party, Sweet Sorbet, Orchid Oasis, Starry Sky, and Tahitian Tide, those are going to be the colors to grab like right in the beginning, if not grab them now, um, just because they may not be in stock by the time that retiring list happens. Because I know a lot of people, especially the reinkers, because if you already have the pads, you're going to want to be able to use the longevity of those pads. So people that no, normally the first thing to sell out is the reinker for those colors. So just to let you guys know that on those uh, five colors that are going out. And with the old always comes in the new set of colors, which I have given you guys a sneak peek here on Facebook of the new colors that were announced during on stage. Ouch. I have like a little sticker in my pants and it's poking me in the back of the knee. Hello, Marcia. Hello, Denise. Hello, Frida. And hello, Peggy. Welcome, you guys. Thanks for coming in. So yes, um, super exciting things. I know a lot of people are getting their new catalogs, especially as demonstrators. Now, those of you who are customers, yours will start coming in towards the like third week of April. So keep watch for that. <clears throat> You're going to definitely love those new catalogs. It is definitely set up different. So if you're expecting it to be the same layout as la this year's catalog, this last year's catalog, you're in for a big surprise. It is completely set up different. And there are a couple reasons why is um, for they've organized it differently to set up for different um, styles of stampers. So you've got like your casual, your avid um, stampers in there and intermediate that they have it set up that way. So it's kind of neat. I know it takes a little bit of getting used to when they change things like that. But I think people are overall, once you have that catalog in your hand, you're going to be um, probably more open to that change than what you might think. So we'll see. You know, Stampin' Up! is a... You know, a big company, they know what they're doing as far as it coming to setting these things up, planning them out. They've got a whole plethora of marketing people behind them that know how to, you know, do these things for us. So, um, <clears throat> just to let you guys know that. Um, what else was I going to talk to you guys about? Hmm. I was going to talk to you guys about something, but now I can't remember. Anyways, I think I'm going to get you guys flipped around because it'll come to me as soon as you guys get flipped around and we get doing this. <clears throat> Thank you guys for sharing. I see that Marcia shared, Denise shared. Thank you so, so much. Peggy shared. I truly appreciate it. Ugh, what did I do? I just got myself out of my live video. Wow. That doesn't work. I need to be able to see. There we go. All right. So I hope this time change is not messing with too many people because uh, we did just, well, I didn't here in the state of Arizona, but I know a lot of you guys had time changes and it is always so hard to kind of get yourself on a rhythm when your times get messed up. Um, even though here in Arizona, we do not have um, mountains or we don't have standard ch time change, daylight savings. That's what it's called. Took me a minute. <laughs> we don't have that. But nonetheless, I still really have to pay attention to times because depending on the time of year, I'm kind of in a different time zone um, as far as the rest of the U.S. is concerned. So um, I really have to keep an eye on that. And even though my time doesn't change, it still kind of does, I guess, relatively speaking. So I hope you guys are all adjusting well to that. 
<clears throat> I hope you guys all got to see last week's um, mystery stamping. I created a super fun card for you guys. And I have seen a couple of you guys creating those same cards and the layouts. I love seeing them. You guys are so creative. If you haven't gotten your card submitted yet, um, be sure to watch the video. Become a part of my um, private group, which is the Pink Barn Stampers group. Not the, sorry. It's just Pink Barn Stampers group. And at that group, you will then see the card that I've made. You're going to see the supplies that you need along with the video that I did live on Wednesday. And then you guys can post your cards in the comments under that blog or under that uh, Facebook post there. So uh, we can all see what you guys have come up with. The only requirement is that you use the same layout that I show in the video. Now it does not have to be specific to Stampin' Up! You can use any pattern papers that you have. We just want to create cards together. That's what the whole point of it is. Thank you, Linda, for sharing. Hello, Lois. <clears throat> Hello, Kay. Welcome, everybody. I'm glad to see you guys coming in here and joining me. So um, I think I'm going to get you guys flipped around now. Move my mouse out of the way. You guys don't need to see that. And then we are going to get into some giveaways. We're going to talk about a couple of things that are going on right now. And then we're going to get down to these super fun Easter cards that I have created for you guys this week. All right, so hold tight. Um, I've tried to move my whole little stand mechanism around a little bit so I'm going to try to get this flipped as quickly as possible so you guys don't have to be in that weird transition so hold tight <coughs> oh see I think that went pretty smooth I will move my mat over and move my light over just a bit. But other than that, I think that went quite, quite nicely. <coughs> okay, cool. I like it when things happen in a good, smooth transition. So if you guys had to close your eyes during that time, um, I am good. We are flipped around. Um, cause I know that sometimes when I'm moving that camera, it does make some people sick and you've got to close your eyes so, um, you can continue watching. <clears throat> so for this quarter for our paper pumpkins, um, we have April, May, and June, and then we have the thanks and beyond die add on available for the, uh, the quarter. So in other words, the die set that you can add on now is going to go and coordinate with April, May, and June. Now you might be thinking, geez, June looks awfully colorless. Well, the reason why they've done that is because it is going to be featuring our new 2024-2026 in colors. So they will reveal that April 2nd to everyone, just so you know. <clears throat> why that looks so funny in this uh, photo here. But for April, we have the Delicate Wings. This is still available to subscribe to or if you do your prepaid. This is um, available through April 10th. And then the May, the best there is, will then be for the May kit. And then you've got June. That will be from May 11th through June 10th. But the delicate wings, it says, send elegant words of encouragement and support to those you love. Make nine cards, three each of three designs with nine coordinating envelopes, pre-cut paper pieces and butterfly designs. It's gonna have some champagne foil. I know I say champagne and it's like, oh yay, we get to have some bubbly with this. Nope, it's champagne foil images, sentiments and labels. Coordinating colors are going to be Lost Lagoon, Moody Mauve, Basic Beige, which I have now 
been informed and I've looked at the catalog and I do see that it is a new in color. So you guys were absolutely on point with telling me that. Basic gray is going to be the classic stamp and spot for this kit and basic black and then champagne foil. So um, if you are a lover of butterflies, this kit is gonna be um, so your jam. It says it partially pops up to make your cards shine. <clears throat> so that's kind of cool that they have kind of added some extra dimension to that with those wings of the butterflies being popped up. It looks like May is going to be more for Father's Day and then June is going to be celebrate the things in life with texture artistic cards. So and then you've got again you can do that add on of the thanks and beyond dies that will coordinate with each one of these kits. All right, so I have printed off the last chance products for the annual catalog and the one for the um, mini catalog. Now, I will let you guys know that I will be doing a, um, a video where I will do a walkthrough in these two catalogs showing you exactly what um, is going to be phasing out, what things are going to be staying, and if you take a look at the last chance for our annual catalog, you are going to see there are a ton of things that are going to be um, a certain percentage off, up to actually 60% off. So that's going to be pretty cool um, to see all these things that you can get at a discount. Now, do remember these items are going to be only as supplies last. So I highly advise you to get your list together now. Um, whether you go in and you highlight your um, PDF that you print off and then have those codes available that are going to be over here on the um, item numbers. So you'll have those available as soon as April 9th comes. I'm going to say you need to get your order placed ASAP so um, you can take advantage of um, getting these items not only as a discount but getting them before they're gone. Um, I do know a lot of people are jumping in and buying them now, even without the discount, just to make sure that they get these items. Hello, Kay. Hello, Priscilla. Um, so yeah, just to let you guys know, and today the set that I am using is the Elegant Eggs. Now, I was telling you guys that this is a super fun set that you're going to want to have, especially if you like to send out Easter cards. This is going to be one that you're going to use for many, many years to come. You've got some really great images here for your Easter eggs that you can color in or have the grandkids color in, the little neighbor kids, any of the kids that you have around in your life. Um, it, this little bunny right here reminds me of a little chocolate bunny. Um, and then you've got some uh, wonderful little sentiments that go with this. Then to top it all off, you've got this great... Um, die set over here where they give you four different egg sizes that you can create. The smallest egg is actually already kind of um, embellished, I guess you would say, and cuts out so fun. And I'm going to actually be showing you guys that in one of the cards. You've got this really neat little wave here. You've got a zigzag that you can use these different elements to decorate your different sized eggs. And not only are these just different sized eggs, they each have their own little decorative edge to them as well. So it's really kind of a cool set to have. The little bunny actually has a coordinating die with it so you can create him to be popped up or as you wish. Um, we're gonna be using that, but I want to let you guys know that this is going to be a, a set that is going to be leaving us. And so if you look at your last chance list for the mini catalog. It is going to be on the first page. It's about halfway down here. You're going to see that the bundle is on there, the dies, and the cling set. Um, but remember that when you buy the bundle as of right now, you're going to save that 10%. Um, and I do know that it is available at this time. Um, I'm also going to be using the lighter than air designer series paper, which is, again, another one of those items that are going to be um, going away. 
And that is kind of three steps down just from that uh, excellent egg. And this is really fun, great paper to use for your fall, or for your fall, for your spring cards. This has got some beautiful bright colors to it. So you can grab yourself a couple of packs of this. It also coordinates with that, um, the hot air balloon. So that's kind of fun too. You've got some clouds in here and just a lot of little elements. I'm gonna be using this paper today. So I'm gonna show you how I'm deciding to use it. <clears throat> but yeah, print these off. Definitely get yourselves um, the copies of those. Oh, and the other thing that I am using is in the annual catalog list and it is one of the embossing folders. It is the raindrop embossing folder, if I can find it. Oh, yep, it's the third one down from the last. That one is actually going to be 50% off. So it is normally $9.50. It's now gonna be $4.75 for an embossing folder. And it is one of the big, like six by six embossing folders. So just to let you guys know that that is on here as well and you're gonna see me use that today. Okay, so let me put these aside. We're gonna go ahead and do our giveaways for um, this last week. So let me get all of my stuff out here. And so for the first card from the uh, Lot of Love, that we created last week was we made this really fun pocket card. Super fun and easy. You can find the replay video along with the dimensions and the uh, shopping list and everything over on my blog at stampinthepinkbarn.com. So it's not stampin in the pink barn, which I hear that a lot. It's just stampin, like stampin' up, the pink barn just so you guys can um, make sure you can get over there correctly and not have any issues. It's actually in the um, description of this video that we are in right now, but you can see how this super fun little pocket card is created over there. And so um, this card here is going to go for liking last week's video. This is going to go to Miss Vicki Buller. So Vicki, this fun little pocket card is gonna come your way for liking my video. So all you have to do is come in here and click that little thumbs up, throw me up some little hearts, and that will get you um, in the drawing for the upcoming um, giveaway. So Vicki Buller, this card is coming your way. Then the next little fun card for commenting. So when you come in here, let me know what your weather's like because I'm a weather geek. Um, let me know where you're watching me from. Just come in and say hi. Any little comment that you put in here um, will get you entered into the drawing for one of the cards from tonight's um, class that we're going to do. But this one here was using those three other cups from the designer series paper. It says this one's on me. Thanks so much. And this card here is gonna be going to Miss Becky White. So Becky, this is coming your way for commenting on last week's video. Then when you come in here and you do me a huge solid by sharing my video, um, you are going to get entered into a giveaway that is for amazing prizes. I either give away embellishments, I will give away ribbon every once in a while. This week I have decided to give away the Counting Sheep stamp set. This is a red rubber cling stamp set. You have got your um, cling little mounts here that you will cling right onto your stamp set. Um, but this is called Counting Sheep. It was a celebrations item. Um, from last year. This is such a cute set. You've got birthday, you've got you're amazing in here with just some really cute little images of sheeps dancing around. <coughs> <coughs> so it is a super cute and fun little set here. This is gonna be going to Miss Kay Wire. So Kay, thank you so much for sharing my video. Now, I will let you guys know that when you share my video, make sure you come back in here 
and you comment the word shared because that is the only way that I will know that you shared my video because there are so many um, like privacy things put in Facebook. It doesn't let me know who shared my video. It just gives me a count, but I don't see the actual people who do it unless your, pri unless your privacy is set to let it be public. Otherwise, um, you need to come in here and you need to comment that you shared. And that is how you will get entered into that. But this is going to Miss K. So you keep watch for your happy mail. All right, you guys. It looks like we are ready to get into the cards um, for today. So remember that every week when I do these cards, this is the kit for the week. So this week's kit is called um, Excellent Eggs. You will qualify for this kit when you spend $35 or more and you must use my host code. This is my current host code here. This is for the month of March. You're gonna get a kit in the mail that looks like this minus my little embellishments here. This is just to keep me organized. But you will actually get a kit in the mail that has three envelopes in it. It will organize your cards um, per uh, project that you're making. So all your paper will be tucked into each envelope for each card. So that way you're not having to fumble through paper and try to uh, figure out which paper goes for which card. I have it organized for you in that way. This week, I have created another card using this uh, excellent eggs and I will be sharing this on Thursday over on my blog. This will be put up there. It'll have the dimensions and everything that I have used, but I just wanted to show you this extra little card that I have created. Um, I was having too much fun with this set, but that's good because then I can always post these because you can never, like you guys have always told me, you guys can never have too many ideas. So, this, I have used a couple of different stamp pads to kind of give it a different look on the sentiment that adds a little bit of pop of color along with this paper here. Now, this paper is called the Bright, Bright something, and I can't remember right now, but it is not the other paper that I showed you, the light, uh, lighter than air. But yeah, it is very, very fun. It, it um, is the paper that was in the sweet collection for the balloons. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of show you just that little extra card there, because that's my extra for the, the week. So the cards that we are actually going to be making today are this fun little open eggs. This is that eggs that the smallest one that is very kind of decorative when you cut it out. So we're gonna be making this one. And then we're gonna be making this, I think this is so elegant, but it is so simple. You guys are gonna love this. Um, you can also add a pop of color to this if you want to by just replacing the white um, card base with a colored cardstock to create a really beautiful card using this. And then the last one is this super fun card here using a couple of the different elements along with that paper that I was telling you about, the lighter than air, and the raindrop uh, embossing folder in the background. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna do this card first. So let's get out all the pieces that we need. Now remember that in your envelope, you're gonna have all the stuff to do the front of your card on the front of your card base. And then whatever you need for the inside of your card base is going to be tucked in between the envelope flap and the back of your card base, just to keep everything kind of organized so you know what goes where. Okay, so let's get all my pieces set aside here and get all my insides. Okay. So let's put that right up there. So my card base is going to be the early espresso. Now know that um, tomorrow you will be able to, I actually have it already written up. So it's gonna be, um, when we're done here, I can get the blog post put up. 
but um, you're gonna find all the dimensions along with the replay video and the shopping list of what I have used for today's cards over on my blog. Um, it, this one's gonna be under the weekly class for the excellent eggs. So the first card we are using our card base is our early espresso. <clears throat> Let me grab my bone folder here so we can make a really nice crease there. The next piece that I need is going to be my, oops, that's the inside of my card. Make sure I grab all the right pieces here. The next piece is going to be my petal pink, which will then be layered next. And then we have our piece of crumb cake, which is gonna go on top of that. But I have decided to use one of the basics 3D embossing folders. Now this comes in a set of three. This is in the online exclusives only. You're not gonna find it in a catalog. I have decided to use this one that looks like a starburst. Now remember, these are 3D, so they're gonna give you a very, very nice and deep impression in our paper. We also, in the set of three, you get this one that has like little polka dots, and then you've got like this more checkered print kind of look. Really, really cool embossing folders. So let's take this and move this out of the way. <clears throat> Man, my throat. It must be from walking over here through all that uh, blowing wind and dirt. Okay, I'm going to set my big machine here. I'm going to take everything off of my plate besides number one. For this, because we're using a 3D embossing folder, we are going to take our paper, which I am using the crumb cake, my Stampin' Up! logo is going to be facing me since this is going to be pushed up and out because I want my impression to be lifted. Then I'm going to be using plate number four, which is quite dusty over here. Um, and that is just gonna lay right on top of that. And then let me turn this machine since the handle's on the opposite side. And I'm gonna run this through with just those two plates. And then that leaves me with this really nice embossed textured paper that we're going to use for the front of our card. So it's going to go just like that. Okay. <clears throat> then we need some white scrap. I don't know why I have two of them in there, but you only need one. The next piece that we're going to need, this is from the... Berry Burst, Old Olive, and the White Glimmer Paper. This is on the online exclusives as well. And look how shimmery and gorgeous this paper is. You've got your White, your Berry Burst, and your Old Olive in this. And it is a pack of three 12 by 12s of these Glimmer Paper. So you'll find that when you go to my online store, which is shopdannygarola.com. Up in the right-hand corner is three little tick marks. If you click that, it's gonna bring down the menu. And when you bring down that menu, go down to shop. It's gonna take you to your online exclusives is the next little button you'll click. And then it'll take you into everything that we have online exclusively that you will not find in catalogs because there are a lot of products in there that a lot of people don't see because if you have a catalog, that's what you're looking at. So don't forget, there's tons of things in the online store that are not in catalogs. So this shimmery, glittery, iridescent paper, I'm gonna put just right on the side there. And then we're gonna do some die cutting, but first I'm gonna go ahead and get this all adhered. So you're gonna see me use kind of a lot of glue on the back of this, and that's because I've got certain high points and low points, and I really wanna make sure this adheres 
to my petal pink base or layer. My base is actually early espresso, so I don't confuse you. Okay, just like that. And then I really try to make sure I really get around all those edges to make sure that is all adhered down. Then this is gonna get adhered to our early espresso base. Okay, like that. Those colors are so fun together. We've got that dark chocolate with the pink and then that light crumb cake on the top. I just really like how those colors work together. Then our white is gonna go right like so. So let's get this strip put on here. Again, we're gonna kinda go heavy on the glue because we are now adhering it down to this embossed piece. Okay, I think that's good. It's not gonna go anywhere. Then I need some scraps. I need a scrap of Petal Pink. I need a scrap of Coastal Cabana. I need a scrap of Lemon Lolly and of Highland Heather. And as you can see, I really grab scraps. <laughs> so I've already cut out my Coastal Cabana and my um, Petal Pink. So I'm gonna set those over there. Now what I do with this is I take my paper and I just align them together like so. Let's move this stuff out of the way. Let's bring our machine back in. So now we're going to need to bring in our other layers back. So we have plate one, or yeah, plate one, plate two. Then we need two of our plate number threes, or I have my um, magic mat um, that I use with plate number three. But just so I make sure you guys see exactly how this is done and how these sandwiches work, you need plate one, plate two, and then two of your plate threes. I always designate one of my plate threes as the bottom because as you can see, it's really going to get um, imprints from those dies cut into it. And then my top one is kind of still on the nice side because it does not have any cutting happening on it. So again, I'm gonna just line those two and I'm gonna cut two of my eggs at once. So you can always, to save yourself time, layer your paper together to get these cut out at the same time. Now watch when I cut this out, it's gonna give you some really fun um, little extras that come out of this as well. I'm gonna bring it just back to myself so it's easier to get out of here. Okay, so my eggs are stuck in there. As you can see, it's cut two of them out. So I need to get these out of here. So I'm gonna move this and put it back down over here. Now, in your dies, you will always have little circles somewhere in your dies if your piece gets stuck. So that's when you pull that out, then you'll see that this is nice and clear and you've gotten all of your pieces out. Now that just came out of there, but there's actually two of them together in here because we've got our Lemon Lolly and our Highland Heather. And I have literally broken all of my nails. But those are some little extra pieces that are kind of fun. If you guys watched Wednesday, the card that I made, you guys saw me take these pieces, but I'm just gonna kind of show you really quick here. So you can really have fun with this cutting out all your different pieces. So you're gonna cut out four of them. But if you wanted to, I'm gonna leave mine hollow. 
but I wanna show you that you can take these pieces and you can put them inside of one another to make some really fun color changes. Just like so, you can take this little piece and say you wanna add it to your, well, no, I wouldn't add it to that, but you can put that in that one. And then what I do is I just take a piece of tape and I run it across the back so it holds everything. But yeah, you can take these little pieces and you can make such cute variations in your eggs just by using those little cutouts. So it's really kind of cool that you get to have that um, freedom to kind of just change things around. Now, like I said, I'm gonna keep mine just hollow because I think they're cute like that as well. So what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I'm gonna use a piece of scrap to do some stamping on, but I think for right now, we're gonna go ahead and add these. So, let me get, I have a brand new pack of my Stampin' Dimensionals. Okay, so I'm just gonna flip all of these over, like so. And I'm just going to put one little dimensional right in this bigger area in here. Okay, let's take these. Now I'm gonna do a dry fit to start just to make sure everything is gonna be where I want it. Okay, so that's gonna work just like that. That's super cute. So then I can start taking the backings off of these and putting them where I want them. But leaving these open gives more of an opportunity to see that super shiny fancy paper behind there. So again, that's another reason why I wanted to leave mine hollow. Okay, just like that. Now on this, I'm going to be using my stylish shapes. Surprise, surprise, Danny's using stylish shapes. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of my go-to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using this large one right here. I'm going to stamp in the early espresso. I'm gonna do Hello Spring. I just re-inked this the last time we were on here, so kind of get that ink moving around on there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stamp that right on this white paper first. And stick my finger in it because, of course, I'm notorious of doing that. Okay, I'm gonna bring my machine back in. Now you don't necessarily need the large machine for this, but since I've already got it all set up, we're going to do this. So as you can see, this is a little longer than what I would like it to be. And because I'm going to be cutting off part of this banner, I'm going to slide my die where my words are closer to the left side of this kind of lining everything up so it looks kind of straight in there. Put a piece of just uh, light adhesive uh, tape
tape on there so I don't tear anything up. I'm gonna run that through. Okay. Hello, Laura. I'm glad you're on here. Oh yeah, Lois just commented to you. Yeah, I talked to Lois um, last week as well and she really wanted to reach out to Laura. So I'm glad you guys are on here together. Okay, so I have this little piece here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to cut off this side. <coughs> And then I'm going to use my crumb cake ink to distress this. But let's grab the trimmer here first and cut this down to size. Now I'm going to watch the spacing that I have over here to decide how much space I want to leave on the opposite side so it looks like it's even. So that looks good. And now we're going to distress this a little bit. So I love these little finger daubers. And it's got a big piece of hair in there. They just go right on your finger like this. You can take your ink pad and you can put that right in there like so. And then I just kind of run it on the back there to make sure I've got the color um, blended a little bit into my brush. And then I'm just going to take this and Add a little bit of ink around the edges. Again, just doing some of that light distressing. So it kind of has that antique look. All right, then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna slide it just in here. I could go all the way in, but then that kind of covers too much of my word there. So you figure out how you like your placement of your sentiment. Grab my dimensionals again here. I put one there, one there. Now before I have another mess. I'm going to clean off this stamp from that early espresso ink. And I'm going to plop this die right back in here. I'm gonna do this right where this kind of touches the outside of my embossed paper. So there is the outside. I also brought, oh, where did I put them? My embellishments I am using are the uh, iridescent pearls for this because I thought it really went well with the iridescent um, glimmer paper. So I'm gonna put a few of these on here just to bling up the outside of this card, like so, okay. Now you're probably asking, why is that cut so weird? Well, I put these in a couple of kits and in my kits you um, got a, a half a sheet of this, so that's why it looks like that. I just had some extras left over. Okay, so now let's do the inside of this. So now I have a piece of petal pink and a piece of the white. I think I need to cut down the white, I do. Okay, so we're gonna cut the white down to, I think we're gonna do three and three quarters by five. Hello, Linda. 
You are not that late. We just started. You're all good. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp in the inside of here that cute, cute little bunny. Like I said, it reminds me of like a little chocolate Easter bunny. Let me get another block here. We're going to stamp that in Memento. And we're going to actually make him look like a chocolate, chocolate little Easter bunny. The sentiment that I'm going to put in the inside of this, since we have Hello Spring, I'm going to put There's No Bunny Like You. I just think that's really cute. And we're going to stamp that in Early Espresso. Then I have brought over some of my Stampin' Blends. Now this is the 100 and 200. Now these are part of the, um, I just lost it. What are they called? <laughs> my brain does not want to work. Um, somebody help me out here. What are these called? Uh, natural to not natural tones something like that why is why is my brain not wanting to work let me see I can bring it up here pretty quick maybe once I log back into my blog well while that's getting itself brought up ugh Well, I don't know what that's doing. That's being screwy over here. Oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Cheese Louise. Sometimes they are called the deep, they're the Stampin' Blends Deep Combo. So that is what those ones are. Those are the two darkest ones. It is, um, SU-100 and SU-200, just so you know. <laughs> that was a lot of work, just so you guys knew that. Um, and then this is the dark petal pink. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the petal pink first. I'm just going to color in the little insides of the ears here and the little dot to the nose. Then I'm gonna take the darker of the two and just use the little A little shadowing marks to create this. And then with the SU 200, I'm going to come back in to, like I said, make it look more like a little chocolate bunny. little bunny has the sweetest little face okay there's that bunny along with our super cute little there's no bunny like you sentiment I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this right to my petal pink layer Let's 
like so. And then we're going to put that right inside of our card. And voila, we have a super cute little inside of our card there. So there is card number one. Hello, spring. There's no bunny like you. Isn't that so cute? You can always change the sentiment on that um, to a happy Easter or whatever you choose. Hello, Miss Rhea. Welcome, dear. I haven't seen you in a hot minute. Yes, the deep blends. That's what that those ones are called. So there is card number one. And now we're going to do card number two. So card number two, like I said, is very simple, but I think it has such an elegant look to it. I definitely wanted to share it with you guys. Um, with this layout of this next card, it could, would actually be really cute, um, or not necessarily cute, but really pretty to do for wedding invitations. You could really change this shape to just be a circle. Um, I just think it is so beautiful with that white and silver on there. It's just a really fun card. So let me go ahead and grab the pieces that we need for it. Which isn't much because there's not much to this card. All right, so we need our base. We need our base, which is um, eight and a half by five and a half or eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. Um, now, what you need to know is with our base, it needs to be our thick basic white. So it will stand up like that. If your recipient wants to stand their card up on their bookshelf or desk or whatever. The next layer I have is going to go right on the front of this. But again, we're going to make this even better with using the embossing folder called, let me get it out here. Oh, come on. This is the Layered Florals 3D Embossing Folder. The big brown truck must be here. Okay. Let's bring this back in. Again, it being a 3D folder, we need to remove all of our other plates. We need to take two and both of our threes off. And we need to just have plate one and plate four. So again, with our Stampin' Up! logo facing up, we are going to open this up and find where we want to have most of those flowers being seen. And I think it looks pretty good like that. So placing it with the hinge in and the Stampin' Up! logo towards the outside edge, we are gonna go ahead and run this through. Like so. Okay, there is our layered florals embossed piece of paper. Isn't that so pretty? And because it's 3D, you really have a deep impression on your paper. Okay, this is then going to go right on top of that as a layer, but I'm going to be using, this is the white, or the silver and white. Now, <clears throat> the one that I'm going to put in the shopping list is the silver and white sheer ribbon. It is the one that is available now. Unfortunately, I forgot to order that. So the one that I have here looks very, very similar to it besides the fact that mine is not sheer, but it'll still work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm just going to wrap this. I'm going to See how long I need it, and then I'm going to cut this. Like so. Now, what you could do as well is, because 
the sheer of the ribbon, you can actually take one of your blends and you can blend on that as well. Because they're alcohol inks, they dry quite quickly. Just if you want to add a little bit of color to this. Um, I was trying to find... Um, well, brown wouldn't look good. Okay, I'm going to use the base to my next card just to show you how pretty this would be if you were to just add this to a colored base. like that to just give yourself a pop of color on the back. It is really pretty to do it that way too. If you have like, especially if you're doing a wedding card and you have a theme color for the wedding, that would be really cool to do. But I'm just gonna keep it all white for my card. So I'm gonna take this, flip it over, grab my tape and tape this down. Like that. I need to take a drink of water really quick. Okay, just like so. Now that can get adhered right on to my base. Um, what I'm going to do is need a scrap of white. And on this scrap of white, I am simply just going to stamp the Happy Easter. But I'm gonna stamp it a little bit different than you might think to make it fit. Actually, I'm a step ahead of myself. We need to actually cut this out first. So I am going to use the second from smallest little egg. And we are going to die cut this out. So bringing back in plate number two and two of our number threes, we're going to put that on there and die cut that out. All right, now we can do the stamping. So I'm going to take my ink pad and I'm just gonna take the word happy first and I'm just going to put the ink just on that word first. Now, if you feel more comfortable, you could always take like your sticky tape or a post-it note and do it that way. This has kind of a big enough gap in between it that I can see to not hit the word Easter. So I just wanna get that little tail of that happy. All right, perfect. And I'm gonna put happy more towards the upper portion of this, like so. Okay, now I need to clean this because we don't wanna stamp that word happy again. Get that to dry. Okay, then now I'm gonna hold it the opposite way and just get the Easter. Inked up. Now, I can see that I've made a boo-boo and I've got a little bit on my happy, but I can just take my finger and just wipe that off where I don't need it. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna put Easter. I'm gonna put the E on the left-hand side of the, the tail of the Y because the A and the S are kind of a bit on the smaller side. So I can stamp that just like so. Perfect. 
because that was a long sentiment and wouldn't fit on my egg, we just made it fit by breaking those two off without breaking them apart. But so we could get our words to fit onto our dye image there. Okay, so now what we need to do is I need to adhere this. Again, going kind of heavy on the glue to make sure I get those lower portions with glue in them. Really giving that a good, good push to make sure that gets all adhered down. I don't want this coming apart from our card base. Okay, our happy Easter is going to get popped up right over here. But I'm going to do a double bow. So I'm going to take this and I'm gonna wrap it around my bow maker twice and then wrap this under. Just like so, and let me see, because it looks like I have my little tails. Oh, that's good. And then flip my tail through. like so okay cut this off over here and then now when i come in here and pull these little bows apart i will have a double bow just like so Okay, let me get both these tails out. I'm going to cut this one to be more on an angle like this. Okay, that's going to get adhered with a mini glue dot. Right at the bottom of my egg. But first, let's go ahead and get some... oomph to this and get it picked up off this card. Well, that's awesome that you're on a break and watching me. What a way to spend your break. I mean, I'm flattered. <laughs> okay, we're going to put that right there. Ah. With a mini glue dot. Okay, that's going to go right down here on the bottom to really show off more of that gorgeous ribbon. And then on the inside of this, so there is our beautiful outside. You could actually take some silver rhinestones if you have those, and you could decorate it with that. I kind of like it just kind of simple like this. Let's do the inside. So I have my piece of white here, my inside layer. We are going to do <clears throat> thinking of you. Get this a little bit straighter on here. We're gonna use Memento. That I'm gonna do right over here towards the bottom. And this is gonna go right like so.
Okay, and then that's gonna go right in the inside there. Okay, just like that. Thinking of you, happy Easter. So isn't that pretty? That's what I was saying. How fun would that be it, as a wedding invitation or even bridal shower, anything like that? It's just really, really kind of elegant, I think. So that's card number two. Let's get to card number three. Clean off a couple of these stamps here. Okay. So for this one, our base is going to be that pool party. Okay, we're gonna fold that in half. We're gonna give that a good creasing there. This one, I need to face it the right way. Then we have a piece of white that we're going to need for the outside of this. We are going to be using that raindrop. Now that is not a 3D embossing folder. Man, I'm gonna get my workout for the day. So for this one, we're gonna take this out again with our Stampin' Up! logo facing us. We're gonna put this white sheet in there. Now, what I've realized that the drops in this are upside down. So I would say turn your folder around. If you have just a solid white paper, it doesn't really matter which way you put it in there because you're gonna take that paper out and you can flip it however you want it. But for this, we need to take out plate number two. We're gonna do a number three. And another number three on top of that. And that is going to run that through there. Each one of these plates give just the perfect shim for whatever it is that you're adding to that machine. There are numbers on your, your plates to tell you, like on here, there's little instructions. When using thin dies, use one, two, and three. So it shows you how to do, I mean, you're gonna use two of your number threes. But it shows you in diagram what you need for each one of your steps that you're using. Okay, so this is where I was saying, when you take this out, it's gonna face you like that. Well, it looks like your raindrops are upside down. So just flip that paper over, and then your raindrops are gonna be fatter on the bottom so it looks like they're getting ready to hit the ground. Okay, again, that folder Starting April 9th is going to be 50% off. It's going to be $4 and what did I say? $4.75. Hot dog. Okay, so that's going to be the next layer. Then I have two of my papers that I'm using from the Lighter Than Air Designer Series Paper 6x6. As you can see, I've showed this earlier that you get some very, very fun, bright and cheery um, spring colors in this paper. It is retiring as well. And so I'm going to use my stripe piece first. Now you can pick any of those papers from that paper pack. And then I'm going to use my one that has like these little white flowers or pom poms or whatever you want to call them. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to grab my um, dark lemon lolly. And I'm going to just rando color in a few of these little flowers on here. 
just to bring out just a little bit more of that lolly color. Now I'm going to be putting my circle in the center of this, so I don't need to really worry about coloring too many of those in in the middle. I just know that these top and bottom ones are gonna be more seen. Um, so let's do one more over here. Not sure if that's going to be seen or not, but, and we'll do this one. Okay. Perfect. So then that one's going to go up there on a slant. And this one will go on a slant down here. Then we're going to take a piece of pool party, a scrap of that. And we need our stylish shapes again, and we need our biggest circle die. We're gonna take that, and when we cut that out, we're going to get a big, large circle here. We also are going to need this one right here for our banner. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. This is going to go on the front of that. I need my piece of white. We're going to cut that. Well, that's not going to fit on that. But I have another one right here. A little scrap. We're going to cut that out of that. And we are going to need a scrap for our egg and a scrap for our bunny. So let's go ahead and stamp those. So there's our bunny. And then we need a big block because we're also going to be using that big egg right here that's got those cute little bunnies hopping through, you know, the grass, the fields. Okay, and then I'm gonna stamp that right up there. Okay, and then I need my, that's not Happy Easter. I need my Happy Easter sentiment, but we will do that after we cut this out. We need to die cut that. Let's get the lid on here. Now our bunny is going to stay white, but we are going to color in this egg. So I'm going to use my light pool party to do this. I'm going to leave all my little bunnies white. I'm just going to do the background in my pool party. Now I will come in and color the flowers and the little stones. So just kind of going in between the little rocks. Going around my bunnies. Okay, we're gonna come down here. There's some places you can go a lot faster where there's not any rocks or any flowers that we need to worry about. Okay. Get this finished up here. OK, 
Okay, there's another flower right down here that I'm gonna watch and make sure I don't get pool party on that because we're gonna color that in with a different color. Okay, that looks good. That looks like I've got like I've got all my little background done. Okay, then I'm gonna take my light crumb cake. Oh, that's not like here's light crumb cake. I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna do these little rocks. Get those colored in. Okay, just like that. Then we're gonna do our little flowers. We've got a couple of them on here. So I'm gonna use dark lemon lolly. I'm gonna really make those really kind of pop because they match our flowers on here. Um, I'm gonna do this one and that as well. Then I'm gonna grab my bubble bath since we've got that in there and I'm just gonna do this one little center flower in the bubble bath. Okay, like that. And then we can die cut both of these along with our banner here and our bunny. So let's bring our machine back in. Put our plates back together. We need one, two, and then two threes. So let's get our papers on here. We're gonna need this along with our large. Our large die. Okay, right here. Oh, no, we're not the large one. Sorry, you need the second from the largest. That's the size of that one. And then we need our bunny. get some of my tape here to tape these down so they don't move around before I get them cut. Okay, that's going to go right like that. A little bunny is going to get cut out right down here. Again, we're going to leave him white. Put another little piece of tape on there and then I'm going to cut my banner as well. Okay, where did I put my other plate? There we go, oops, don't need that. So we're gonna slide this in here and then cut all three of these out at the same time. Whoop. Okay, my banner moved, so hold on, we need to maybe get another piece of tape to put on that because it shifted. Okay, let's put that on there and make sure that stays. Everything else is still good. Okay, there we go. Now let's get all this off of here. Move this out of the way. Okay, there's our banner. Here's our bunny. He's little, we don't wanna lose him. And then our egg. Okay, let's put this back in here. All right, let's get our scrap out of the way. Let's bring our card back in here now that we've got all of our elements. The last thing we need to worry about stamping is I'm going to use my pool party ink. And again, coming in here, this time I'm just gonna take a little bit of this tape and I'm just gonna cover up the small portion of that happy stamp Easter. 
I can then toss that since it's now covered in ink. And I'm gonna do Easter over here on this side, lining that up. Okay. And then I'm gonna clean this off. Okay, I'm grabbing another little piece of that tape. I'm going to portion off the Easter since we just did that side. And we just need happy. Okay, and we're gonna stamp happy over here. Like so. Okay, just like that. And then now we can put this ink away. All right, now we can get this card adhered. So let's take our stripe piece first. get it placed down so it's gonna go on a slant like this I'm gonna tr try to get my points as close to the top as possible like that and this piece over here then with ugh, I got glue on my fingers and then with this little piece here we're going to adhere it down Right on top of that, going the opposite way. Like so, so we can see the paper underneath this. Now we need to take the lemon lolly. This is called the Baker's Twine Three Color Pack. And now what I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to hold it on the back side here, and then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna wrap. I kind of move that down a little bit and then wrap again, just like so. And then I'm going to cut this and tape it. Right in the center, just like so, like that. So we've got that at an angle that we can move this around if we so need. Let's take our circle here and figure out kind of how we want that. And that actually looks pretty decent. I think I like it like that. I can still see a couple of my little flowers that we've colored here. So that's gonna go there. Okay, we're gonna pop this up. Okay. Okay, that's gonna go right in the center here. Okay, then this egg is then gonna get glued right in the center of that. I've got a glue booger, so I just gotta remove that. Okay, we're gonna take this down by that little bottom portion there, watching both of our sides. Make sure that's straight, because those things are on a slant. It'll kind of throw your eyes kind of off, thinking that everything's crooked, but I think you'll be okay. Our little happy Easter is gonna go right across the center. Whoops, let's get it straight. Pay attention here. Okay, that's gonna get adhered right there. There's kind of a lot going on with this card, but 
I think it's very, very pretty. It really takes care of that Easter card for you with all these little bunnies and these colors. And then because Easter is in spring, you've got the little spring raindrops. Just kind of really ties everything together in this card. Okay, there's that. Our little bunny is going to go right there in the center of our words that we spread apart. He just looks so cute right there. It was just meant to be in between the Happy Easter. Okay, let's get some of this stuff moved so we can finish this card up. All right, this is gonna now go on our card base, just like so. Okay, so this is just going to get glued straight down to that card base. I'm going to add quite a bit of glue on here because of, again, all the embossing that we have going on. That's going to go like so. Isn't that so cute? Oh my gosh, I love it. It is cold, I know. So there is that. Then um, what I decided to kind of do, I know these are not um, pool party, but you know what? I think they look really good on this. So I'm gonna use the festive, these are called festive pearls. I'm gonna use the green. And then it gives me an excuse to use them as well and not have to use them just for Christmas. So I'm going to put a couple of these on here. I'm gonna do one over there and one right up here in this corner. So pretty cool. Oops, let's move this one down. Those look like they're sitting right across from each other and I don't like that. Okay, we're gonna bring this one down and we will try to uh, pry that up a little bit. There we go, that's better. Okay. Now, see, this is where I was saying, you could even do some of these little silver ones on this card and place them around on there if you want more silver action going on on that card. These would be perfect for that as well. But those are the festive pearls. And then let's do the inside. So I have a white piece here. I need to grab my out of my scraps here. Let's see, what did I do in my that card? Okay, I used a stripe. So let's take this, cut this at a half an inch, like so. Okay, we're gonna adhere that into the inside here. I also want to take this little egg and just kind of prop it over here on the edge. Like so. Now, as you can see, I have a little bit of my egg here. Just wipes off, just like butter. I know we're waiting for these. Uh, I've had lots of questions about this glass mat. It was part of a join special that we had um, during celebrations. And they are not available just to purchase. It was something that you could have gotten if you joined the Stampin' Up! team. So if you joined my team during then, you could have picked this glass mat. And then I know they gave demonstrators 
the opportunity to purchase for it for a while. But um, so if you were already an established demonstrator, they put it on for us to be able to purchase for a short period of time. And I know I've had other demonstrators ask me, you know, are we able to purchase that? And at this point in time, we're not. They have mentioned that they might let demonstrators order it, but I don't know if they actually have enough in stock and that's why they haven't decided to do it. I don't know if they're going to be making them anymore and that's why they haven't let us purchase them any longer, but I don't know. It's just kind of up in the air. I guess we'll see unless they do another promotion with it or something. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing with this little egg here. I'm gonna just come in here and color this. Oh, okay. Just to add the same look to the inside of the card. And I'll do the same thing. I'll bring in the crumb cake and do those little, the rocks. So let's just finish up this background here. Okay. Now light. That's dark. I keep grabbing that dark the light crumb cake. Okay, there's those little rocks and we've got one little flower here. I'm just gonna do that in my dark lemon lolly since I have it in hand. And then I'll just do these two little up here. And there we go. That is complete. We can now adhere that right in the inside of our card. Patty, you're not seeing any comments on, the, on your screen. Um, depends on what device you're on. Sometimes if you hold, especially if you're on like an iPad, if you're holding it at a certain, I think it's landscape. If you're holding it landscape, you won't be able to see the comments unless you like slide your finger. I think it's if you slide your finger to the left, it'll bring up all the comments. But if you flip your iPad to where it's portrait style, then your comments will be seen. Not sure what device you're on, but I just know if you're using an iPad, it's that way. And I think it's the same way if you're on an iPhone as well. I haven't seen you in a hot minute, Miss Patty. I was actually thinking about you. So there is card number three. Let me bring all of these back in to share with you because these are just such sweet cards. And if you are in for making those fun Easter cards, this will get you kind of some more ideas to go ahead and create your cards. So there you go. There is tonight's fun little um, Easter card collection that we made for our kit this week. I hope you guys enjoy these. If you have this set, please case these cards if you like them. I am all about people using other people's ideas. That's why we share, right? If you don't want people using your idea, then don't share your cards. That's kind of how I feel about it. Um, so there you guys go. I hope you enjoyed tonight's class. I had a blast coming up with these cards and sharing them with you. Um, Easter is really fun around here. This year, I don't think we're going to do an egg hunt just because my kids are getting kind of older and there comes a point in time where you just kind of kind of kind of call it quits and I it's it's hard to see it go, but um we like to uh, 
kind of just hang out at home. I like to do, sometimes we do a ham, sometimes we do a turkey, but um, I'm on a cell phone. I usually can see it this way, weird. Hmm, well, you know, Facebook changes stuff all the time. Our phones update things all the time. So I'm not sure if it's due to an update that just recently happened, or maybe you have an update that you need to do. Um, and it's that's what's preventing it. Or sometimes you just need to completely log out of Facebook and then log back in. And sometimes that'll be just as easy as it needs to do to re um, set the comments and stuff. I don't know. I'm not a techie person and it's forever frustrating with all the things that they're constantly trying to change for us and to have to try to keep up with it all. Huh. Yeah, sometimes it can be kind of a challenge. <laughs> Trust me, I know. <laughs> all right, you guys, thank you so much for coming in and spending your Monday evening with me. I truly enjoyed um, sharing these cards with you. I love you all. Be safe. Um, and I will see you guys next Monday. All right, you guys. Oh, and don't forget this Thursday coming up, I will be doing the alternatives for the um, memorable moments paper pumpkin. So, all right, you guys have a good one. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.